Welcome to another episode of the No Ceilings Podcast. I am Tyler Metcalf, joined as always by Tyler Rucker. Rucker, how are we doing? Metcalf, I'm doing good. Um, we're recording this. We started recording this right at halftime of the Bucks celtics game. <laughs> Celts were up about 30. So I'm terrified to look at the result later because I was really having a good time. I haven't seen the Celtics play like that since the beginning of the year. Um, which is a good time to get hot. As you know, Mr. Metcalf with the Timberwolves, I have to give your T-Wolves some credit. They look very fun lately. So, you know, what better way to distract some just pure joy than to talk about some high schoolers? I'm, I'm doing good. How about you, Metcalf? I'm, I'm just off the rails with draft season and basketball. Yeah, and the, the, the disparity in talent levels that you've uh, kind of consumed here in the last oh, yeah. couple hours is oh, yeah. massive. Yeah. Um, really, really, I... I, I <laughs> Rewatched. So, for spoiler alert for everyone listening, as you could probably tell, we're going to be talking about the McDonald's All American game. We're, me and Metcalf have been possessed. We're already looking three steps ahead, like a chessboard. So, I crammed my second viewing with some some notes of that game, which was really fun, and then immediately switched on the Celtics game. And yeah, it was a very big jump um, for the eyes. The old eyes really <laughs> had to adjust to the level of basketball we played. But hey, you know, we're all having fun here. Yeah, I it's I, I'm kind of excited to get more of your big picture thoughts on this high school class because yeah. you know obviously we're mixing it up a little bit. Uh, there's tournament talk galore. It's kind of tough to do so given the final four. Um, should be fun games regardless, but not a whole lot of draft talk there. So we wanted to mix it up with one of the biggest high school events of the year. It's kind of the first time a lot of people get their eyes on some of the top incoming freshmen. Um, so typically, what has your kind of viewing habit been with the McDonald's All-American game? Yeah, I mean, this is one of those events where I almost like to watch with just an open mind. I mean, obviously, there's going to be some guys in this class like Bronny James and DJ Wagner, guys that have been getting this national spotlight where it's like, OK, you, you're going to hear about them because they're t- some of the top recruits or big picture names um, in this class, but I just like to go in with an open mind and be like, okay, let's just see where we're at. Um, Almost, you know, I I do watch it multiple times because the first time I'm trying to just watch and just see like who pops, um, who jumps off, who do I get intrigued with? And then second time I might just write down like, okay, this looks solid. This looks solid. And I'm not really paying attention to, who's dropping 20, who's going to win MVP of the game. I'm more just trying to see like, okay, what's something I can roll with to get excited about with this guy for the next year. It might be a really impressive drive that the guy doesn't finish where I'm just like, Oh, okay. That looks like something. I mean, just flashes, anything that could really get you intrigued about something developing. Cause these guys are all unfinished products. Yeah. Um, a lot of them are going to have a big, you know, if not growth spurt, just height wise, but when you're talking about the talent level going from high school to one year of college, when they're getting into a training development staff and all that fun stuff. So I'm just trying to look at at flashes and trying to make some notes and get familiar with some of these guys. It's not like we haven't been monitoring them throughout the year, but now that you're seeing them against each other on the biggest stage and almost an all-star game setting, I just want to see who stands out from from the others. What about you? Yeah, same. I I just look for stuff to get excited about. I mean, because like you said, it's an all star setting, so really diving into the nitty gritty of their playmaking or their defensive footwork or the timeliness of their rotations. It's like you can do some of that, but at the end of the day, it's an all star game where these seventeen and eighteen year olds are having fun and playing on the biggest stage together. So it's. I just look for what pops, what, what can we get excited about? What can we potentially use as a sign of things to come? Um, like last year when me, you and Maxwell talked about last year's all American game, you know, Brandon Miller and Cam Whitmore were two guys who really stood out to us um, at that time. And obviously they weren't no names. They were in the McDonald's all American game for a reason, but they had huge performances and really kind of carried that momentum into the season and had really good freshman seasons. 
so just from a watching standpoint, you know, quote unquote scouting standpoint, that's all I'm really looking for from these games. It's a, it's an important measuring stick. I think for a lot of these guys too, because it's, you know, you're, you're playing against the best guys in the country. Um, always there's some guys that, you know, the passionate diehard high school basketball followers might be like, Oh no, this guy should have been there. It, it happens every year. But for the most part, you're playing against 95% of the the best talent in the country. So if you can go there and have some success, you start feeling pretty good about yourself. Um, and like you just said, we saw that with Brandon Miller and Cam Whitmore last year. It's always a good, you're, you're getting the vibes. Everyone's getting that preseason, just way crazy mock draft hype that I'm like, whoa, okay, let's have some fun with these down the road. But um, it's always interesting to see, you know, what these guys are working on. What do they need to work on? Um, and I just like to see like, okay, like, who's the alpha here? Like, who's the guys like who is, is making a statement and going to carry this momentum to, you know, the rest of their off season before their freshman year, because also now most of these guys are going to Nike hoop summit and me Metcalf for everyone that doesn't know me and Metcalf are going there and Corey and Albert, no ceilings going to be live in Portland. We're really pumped about that. Um, we'll be there all week. So, we're going to be able to see a lot of these guys in person, which is why I was so mm -hmm. excited to watch this game, especially this year. Yeah. So just selfishly, it's a really fun kind of appetizer for this week of seeing these guys up in person or up close in person with practices and the Nike hoop summit game. Um, and then also for a handful of these guys, seeing how they've grown from the F the FIBA U 17 world cup from over the summer and seeing how their games have grown and matured and improved since then. So, it's just kind of been really cool to track these guys a little more um, and a little more early than I historically have. Um, and and we're definitely seeing improvements and growth in these guys' games from just, was that, eight, nine months ago? <laughs> it's so funny you just brought that up because it just ran through my head. And I was like, oh, my gosh, we talked about these guys this yeah. summer with FIBA play. And then I was like whoa, this is addicting. Like, I, I really understand why scouts get obsessed with this stuff because I used to always be like, oh my gosh, I'm watching this guy, he's 17 years old. But now it's like, oh, seeing him years later or, you know, seeing him nine months later, eight months later, this is fun. And then we're going to be able to evaluate him next year. I like this. So um, that's just funny to realize it. Like, because with the first year with no ceiling started and we didn't really get that full off season of like, consuming like film and stuff so oh wow that that really hit me hard Dude, are we getting old no just kidding. getting please kidding. Ben, ben. <laughs> no but i'm excited like, i mean where do you want to start like hit me with it where do you where do you want to start what are your initial thoughts you you steer the direction you're always pushing it towards me so anywhere you want to start you you take the floor sir all right. Uh, well, let's take a quick break and then we'll dive into the guys who really specifically pop for us in this game. Okay. And we're back. Um, all right. I, I, this guy didn't necessarily have the best game, um, okay. but he really stood out. I thought, I thought he was one of the guys who really popped up the most. Um, and kind of similar to the FIBA U17, that's Ron Holland. Um, oh, gosh. This dude is, he might be a psychopath. And I mean that as the biggest compliment possible. Um, he plays so fucking hard all of the time and is a terrifying defender. I absolutely love his game. Yeah, I um I didn't know you were gonna bring the heat right out, you know, right from the oh, kitchen yeah. right away. Um, okay, here we go. We're off. Ron Holland's going to Texas. Um, listed at six eight two hundred. I'm going off of just high school measurements, folks on ESPN. So if you want to yell at someone, yell at them. I encourage it. You can find them at Tyler or at Tyler <laughs> underscore Rucker. <laughs> no, don't bring me your ESPN hatred. Um, actually, yeah, you can bring it to me. I'd love to read those <laughs> comments. Um, I I wrote a lot of notes down on Holland um, 
through both of my viewings of that game. And one of my notes just said, looks like the alpha. Yeah. Covers so much ground in a hurry. I mean, he got downhill and I was like, whoa, that is a fighter jet taking off. Um, He's lengthy. I think he's got some really good room for weight to put on. He looks like he does look like a psychopath on the defensive side of the ball. I, I kept watching that game and I just was like, why is this not the number one guy? Um, just because of how much he pops and how yeah. good he looks and how just the mentality and the motor is running on it's cooking always. It is, you know, it's about to it's on like seven thousand RPS. It's just cooking. Um, I think he's got the tools to be a really special talent defensively. It's the shot. And it was the shot when we watched him at FIBA play. Like Mm -hmm. we kept saying like, this guy's really fun. He's just got to get a shot going. But now he looks way more fluid to me than he did in the summer. Mm -hmm. Like he looks like he's growing into his body. The athleticism's taking over. It's just, I think the shot's got to come around and it looks solid to me for where he is right now, it's just erratic. It's spraying everywhere. Like one time I was like, okay, good form. And then it just like barely hit the rim. I was like, Oh, yeah. um, and that also might just be, he's just running around like a madman <laughs> and he needs to calm down. But I think there's some, some really intriguing stuff developing. The handle could get a little erratic. Mm-hmm. Um, he drove into some traffic sometimes where I think he's just trying to make something happen or make a, a window that doesn't exist. Um, well, I don't know. What about you? What did you see? Yeah. I, I, I love that you brought up his speed and how much ground he covers. Cause in the open court, he looked like the fastest dude out there. And at six, eight, it's like, Oh my God. Like, uh, there was one transition, um, score that he had where he got from like half court to the rim and like four steps. Um, and it was like four steps, two dribbles. It was really impressive. You, he just flew up the court. It's like, oh my God, this dude has scary speed. Um, but the play that really just keeps playing over and over in my head was, like you said, uh, handle's not really there yet. He tried to drive, drove into traffic, turned it over. You know, all-star game setting, you expect a kid to just be like, oh, that didn't work and just kind of drag back on defense um, balls already across half court. He's full sprinting down and gets the chase down block and sends it into the 10th row. And it's like, okay, if you're playing this hard in the McDonald's all American game. And then I remind myself of him, you know, trying to fight the entire France team after they won the world cup title in the summer. It's like, Oh yeah. Okay. That, that all tracks. And it's like, okay, you're playing this hard. You're covering that amount of ground. And You want that that desperately. And that wasn't the only block he had. He had a bunch of rim protection stuff. I thought he moved his feet really well on defense. It's all, what is he going to be on offense? And I'm a little lower on the shot, I think, than you are. Um, Like you said, the kind of erraticness of it where I think he had back-to-back jumpers or back-to-back possessions with a three and one barely scraped the front of the rim. The next one hit like the top side of the opposite side of the square and like clanked off. He's like, Ooh, that's kind of all over the place. Um, But I really liked how effective he was at kind of getting to the rim on those straight line drives. And he's able to really leverage his kind of stride length and foot speed. So I I think there's stuff there. Um, I'm hoping obviously he's going to Texas. I'm hoping we don't see like a repeat of the Dylan Mitchell experience where he's allowed to do nothing on offense. I think he's got a little more to his game and a little more confidence um, and versatility to his offense. That defense is going to be a lot of fun though. The two of them being together, um, that's going to be terrifying. (laughs) Um, Just realized with just an obscene amount of athleticism. Uh, So that'll be fun to watch, but I'm yes. hoping he's allowed to do a little more on offense. Yeah, I, I need to clear up because sometimes I like to summarize and I don't I need to extend with what I'm trying to say. The shot looks solid to me when he had his feet set. Like but when he was moving and when he was off the dribble and stuff, like it looked a little all over the place when it came yeah. like to the form. But like one time he had like a straightaway shot where you're like, okay, if you're watching on camera, you like can see kind of a a good setup. And I was like, okay, it's fine. But then it was just not close. And I was like, all right, where are we at with this? 
And um, they even interviewed Jermaine O'Neal on the sidelines. He's like, I've been working with them. And I was like, I love to hear that. But I was like, also, Jermaine, you had an ugly shot. So this is gross. <laughs> but um, no, I mean, that's always good. And he is going to be competitive. The block you're talking about was so funny because it was early on. And I feel like the whole vibe of the game shifted from that play. It was kind of like a everyone got all right all right if we're gonna be playing like chase down blocks and high motors like ron holland just set the tempo for everyone and it turned out to be one of the more exciting mcdonald's games i've watched in a long time Mm -hmm. like it was it was awesome in the second half like down the stretch so i love them um the shots the swing skill it is with a lot of guys but just everything he has and how hard he's gonna play i still think he's gonna be a top five prospect um but if that shot comes around, gives me a lot of vibes about another guy who just played in Texas this year, not for Texas, but our own Jairus Walker, just kind of one of those vibes. I'm not saying as just calm down, Metcalf. I'm not saying that I'm saying he gives me the same vibes of like, you have the nastiness and the right mentality. I want on the defensive side of the ball. You have that potential to be a plus defender at the next level. He's not the playmaker that Jairus is. Yeah. But I think Holland has a lot of tools that if the shot just swings, then you're really cooking with something. All right. Who kind of else was on your list for who stood out? Um, I, let's, let's talk about Bronny. No, let's wait. Everyone listening wants to hear about Bronny. We're going to wait. We're going to make <laughs> you listen to as much talk as we can. Um, what did you think about DJ? Um, I thought he was a no-show in the first half. Yeah. Um, and then completely took over and dominated in the second half. Um I I was kind of surprised at how much he struggled finishing around the rim. Mm-hmm. Um, but his shot looked really good. I thought there were some really good instances of him kind of passing out and playmaking out of drives. Um, I thought it was he kind of paired his flashy creative handle nicely with a, a pretty quick first step. So even though he kind of struggled with the at rim finishing um, from my memory, that's not really a hole in his game. So maybe it's just one of those games, something to keep an eye on down the road, but the way that he was kind of able to get to a shot in any spot of spot on the floor, I thought was pretty encouraging. I, I he quick. Okay. So he's number two. Some people have him as number one mm-hmm. prospect in the country. ESPN has him at number two. Um, ESPN has Justin Edwards, who we'll talk about at number one. Um, DJ's going to go to Kentucky play with him. I just was underwhelmed in the first half. Um, he was just kind of going through the motions. He was just out there. Yeah, and then the second half, I was still underwhelmed for a lot of it, and then like, I, it was just, I kept waiting. I felt like, I was like, he needs another gear. I feel like he gets by people and doesn't have another gear. And then I feel like later on he had a drive when I think maybe the game was picking up like competitive wise, like, and then he had another a really good drive where he just blew by someone. And I was like, why wasn't that there like earlier? And then I just wrote down I, I, like quickly. And it wasn't because he's the number two guy, but quickly I was like, I need to focus on him in Portland. Because I was like, I just got a lot of questions. Look at Metcalf surprising me on YouTube with the breakdowns. I love this. Um, guy's full of secrets. Um, I, I just, there, there's just some stuff that I was like, okay, the at rim finishing, like you're saying, shocked me at times. But this is also a dangerous setting for some of these guys because if you just don't, have the things cooking right away and you you struggle to have your shot fall on you look bad compared to other guys rolling and i remember watching his dad play i loved his dad i i thought yeah. he was great and um i don't know I, it's just one of those i think i'm gonna see one day of practice probably of dj wagner and be like oh my gosh okay i'm in and those are tough when you're going off one game because mm-hmm. he could have been the best player on the floor for a whole week of practice and then goes and struggles in the first half and you're like where is this guy you know number two prospect what are you talking about but i don't know just i'm just interested and i don't know if it was because some of the other guards caught my attention and i was just like what's going on with dj but that's just where i was at 
Yeah, and I, I kind of got Jaden Hardy vibes from him, where like that that clip I just kind of showed you, and it's a nice you know pick and roll kind of lo- little hesitation move around the free throw line and the extension finish with his left hand. You know the hesitation, it was kind of subtle. Like he would like to see a little more there to drag the defender out even a little bit more. Um, but I mean, he's and he's not a big dude. Uh, was he listed at he's six list- two one seventy five? Yeah. Um, so he might be one of these guys where it just takes him a little bit to kind of really adjust to that step up in athleticism and side size and speed. Um, but I think the foundation for a really shifty creative scoring guard is there. Um, how he's kind of able to build on his playmaking is what I'm really intrigued by. There's, there was definitely some flashes to, to get intrigued or excited about, um, just the first half had me underwhelmed and sure, yeah. we, I feel like we did watch him in FIBA and we were yep. like, eh, like oh, he's... yeah, he, I, he really struggled shooting. He couldn't, he make, struggled by a shot. He struggled. And then I feel like in the second half of maybe one of the big games, he started making some plays where he was just playing with possessed and like, was almost trying too hard. That's what it was. It was like almost trying too hard yeah. to make a play. And we were like, okay, at least he's playing hard. I'd rather yeah. have it that way. And then I think he still made a couple of nice plays. So this is one of those guys where it's just like, okay, let, let's see. He's going to the right place. Yes. He's going to the right place. I I, I have no doubt that Calipari is going to have some fun with him as a card. All right. You pick. Should we get into it? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. The, the, this was the McDonald's All-American game of nepotism. Um, there was NBA line, lineage littered across the board. Um, and highlighting that was Bronny James, who – 28th on ESPN's uh, top 100, um, currently undecided, 6'3", 180. <laughs> he looked really fucking good. He looked good. <laughs> he looked um, really good. I've kind of been – I have to admit this, and I need everyone to understand that I mean this from the heart. I don't give a shit what anyone's name is. Yeah. Like, I, I did not care – that this is LeBron's kid. Yep. Um, I cared that everyone was giving him the hype of being LeBron's kid. I was like, no, this is Bronny. Like, he's not going to be LeBron at the next level. He's <laughs> God did not grant him the the same gifts <laughs> athletically and frame wise that LeBron did. So I was just like, we got to treat Bronny as a completely different player. We got to yeah. be open minded with this. We can't be comparing to dad. So. All, and and what I'm trying to get at is with all these guys, I always go like, don't don't tell me this is LeBron's kid. He's the next big thing. I I'm gonna make my own evaluation when I watch him. And I love what I saw. Yeah, I, I, I've loved what I've seen the growth throughout the year. Um, he looks like he's gonna be a really dang good player. Yep. And I'm not saying he's gonna be a superstar, but I think Bronny's gonna be a guy that's gonna carve himself a role at the NBA level. Now I'm fascinated to go see where he goes to college because I think that's going to be a really big decision for him. He obviously understands that. That's why he's uncommitted. Um, That's a big part because I just want to know what role is he going to have? Is he going to be sharing a backcourt with someone, but he looks nasty and the outside shots becoming a weapon. Um, It looks solid. Um, I think the defense is what's getting me in love with him. He had a possession. Gosh, who was it against? I wrote down. I thought I wrote it down. I I, I think I know what you're talking about. I thought I clipped it. I apparently oh, didn't. Dang it! But he just sh- he was just like it, I mean I'm watching. Footwork, it was strong, perfect physical. footwork. He was going lights out quickness laterally, and you know when his dad was younger and his dad was engaged, he had nastiness too as a defensive player. And I'm not saying LeBron still wasn't a great defense player his whole life, but I'm just saying Bronny's got to play with a different mindset yeah. than his dad did because his dad was six, eight and a freak of nature bull in a China shop. Bronny looks like he's a guy that understands like, okay, I got to live on the defensive side of the ball to, because if you could play defense, they're going to find a place for you. Mm-hmm. Um, if you could play defense and stretch the floor as a shooter, they're really going to find a place for you. So I've loved what I saw. I thought the only thing I, my nitpick about him was he had a couple drives where he just looked a little wild with passes. 
Like no, he had I, the right idea of where he wanted to go with it, but it was just way off. And he did like twice. And I was like, okay, like, but the beginning of the game, everyone's a million miles an hour. Sorry, go ahead. No, I, I think the passing is an important kind of thing to touch on because at his size, I think that's going to be a really important skill for him to build up. Otherwise he's going to kind of get pigeonholed into this three and D combo guard role where he has to play alongside a jumbo or larger initiator. This is all obviously assuming that he goes to the pros and makes the NBA and all that stuff. But, you know, long-term thinking here, it's like if he can really grow that passing, not to like a Lamelo or giddy level where he's this freak playmaker, but to a more consistent, more accurate, um, more reliable passer, then you can kind of slot him in at, you know, the quote unquote point guard position a little more consistently. He becomes a little more malleable, the lineups that you can run out there with him become a little more flexible and versatile. So, and I, I think the defense looked incredible. I really buy him as a defender. The shot looked really good. Um, I thought way more reliable off the catch than the pull-up. He did have a really nice pick and roll pull-up three um, that was pretty deep in the second half that looked really good. But the mechanics and the consistency and comfort level shooting off the catch looked much higher. And, you know, being a role player, again, that's that label is never an insult on this podcast. That's probably going to be what he does. But if he can really see a, a jump in that playmaking or that just the the passing consistency that's going to do wonders for his game in the long run yeah and he's entering the potentially he's going to enter the nba in a perfect time because the league is combo guard heavy right now i mean um but i'm right there with you it's just like the the ingredients are coming together you just need some, like another area to to come along with it because the outside shots there, the defense is there. It's like, can you get one more? And then we're, you know, then lottery is not re- unrealistic. But yeah. I, I think he's got to go somewhere where, um, you know, he's going to get some minutes. I mean, obviously he's going to get some minutes. He's got the talent to play. But you know what I'm just saying? He's yeah. got to get touches. He's got to get maybe – I don't want him to go somewhere where he's potentially going to be a, a third guard in a backcourt. Like, I go Do somewhere go where you're playing. Again. No, gosh, dang it. Please, please, no. Please. I also don't want to deal with them for the Arizona for the Pac-12. <laughs> so get out of, get away from us. Because he's also going to go to USC. I already know it, but whatever. Oh, that'd um, be fun. Yeah, or go Ohio State or something. I don't know. Ooh, or I like him at UCLA. I think Mick Cronin would have fun with him. Oh gosh, actually, Mick would. I if Amari went back to gosh, would Amari make up his mind? He's going to drive me crazy. I know all these guys are. What if Bona? Oh gosh! How, Bona rude, how and, rude of them! If Bona and Bronny went <laughs> and played together, they might actually just get teams to like quit in the middle of the game. Just be like, we can't do this anymore. <laughs> Every shot's blocked, or well, there's a steal. Um, what else you got? Who who else you got? Hit me with it. Um, I can't say the USC guy's name. We practiced like ten times before we hit record. And I still uh, say his last name. Yeah, I mean, he. I think he was like co MVP with Wagner. So I, I, I suppose we should probably talk about Isaiah Collier. 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 Yeah, I said it. Right. Um, go. Man, he's, uh, n- number woo! number go ahead, three go on ESPN going to USC, 6'4, 205 pound point guard. He's a pit bull. I, mean, woo! Oh I liked God. him. God. I mean, he is. He got to the rim whenever he wanted. And he is strong and athletic and really good burst. He was fun. He, look, he listed at 205. He looked about 230. I was like, <laughs> my goodness. They kept zooming in, and I was like, this dude is yeah, like, are, are you going to USC to play the end or point <laughs> yeah, guard? I was like, goodness. <laughs> the starting linebacker in the offseason. Um, he looked fun. Um, kept checking a lot of boxes for me. I thought he had some serious bursts. I thought he had some nastiness. He looked like he had some athleticism on some drives. I think fearless. Um the shot looked okay. I didn't love it. Um, I don't know what you thought. I also didn't love it. It, lo- it looked like he, the way he released it was very different every time. Um, I think he hit the side or top of the backboard a couple times shooting out of the corner. Um, but I, I, 
I wasn't familiar with his game coming into this game. <laughs> That's um, the meme. I'm so... sorry, I wasn't familiar with your game. <laughs> um, but the way the announcers were talking is like, okay, well, he's put a lot of work in on his shot. So he was confident in it. You always like to see that. I, I would rather have a guy with mechanical issues who's confident in taking them and, you know, forcing the defense to respect it a little bit than someone who's just not even a threat at all. So if it's something he's continuing to work on, I think it needs, it still needs a lot of work, but as long as there's confidence and the work ethic is there for it, I'm intrigued. The one thing that was funny though, is I feel like it happened like three or four times throughout the game. Like the commentators would say something and then a play would happen and it just completely was the opposite of what the commentators (laughs) said. So like Isaiah had a drive. And uh, they're like, he really needs to work on his defense and his playmaking. And I feel like the next possession up, he just throws like a gorgeous no look dime <laughs> for a backdoor. And then he came, he had like two possessions where I, he looks like a guy that's giving a crap on defense. Like he, he's probably making, he's probably heard people say you need to get better defensively and he's taking it to heart. But he had like a possession where he was just a pit bull defensively. And I was like, this is a guy that needs to work on it. And then he had another one in the second half that it was like, unreal defense and then the refs called it for a foul and it was just like the whole bench was like oh, oh that was like the, like he barely two hand touched him <laughs> barely and then like one of the commentators like well you got to call that in the setting and i was like no you don't it's an all-star <laughs> game like it's ridiculous but um the only the last thing i'll say about him and it, it's with the shot it bugged me in the beginning of the game and then i was like i feel like i just saw something and i'm wrong and then every time he went to the line it bugged me I feel like he has a hitch at his follow through mm. and I can't tell if he's pushing off with like his thumb or something, but he went five for 12, I think from the line and it was yeah, always at the top. Lot. And I was like, is he having an annoying hitch right at this release point? And it just drove me crazy, but he looks like he has all the tools to be, I, I, he looks like he's going to put up crazy numbers. Yeah. Um, just the shot. I hate how we always <laughs> get to just the shot with prospects, but um, it's a true thing. So I don't know. He looks easily to be really fun. I'm excited to watch USC basketball next year. That's all I'll say. Someone who shot, I have no concerns about Jared McCain. Um, oh my gosh. I liked him number, a lot. Number tw- 12 overall recruit, uh, six, three, one ninety five shooting guard going to Duke. He was, he was arguably my favorite player from this game. Um, it, just going by my heart. He was so much fun. He also missed like five wide open threes I can remember. And I was like, he could have had 30. Like he was just, and they were all good shots. They all just like, you know, in and out. I was just like, oh gosh, like I loved how he played. He's listed at six, three. I thought he looked like he was six, five on the court. And I don't think it was just his hair, but my, my favorite part was I was just love in love with the way he was playing the game and his shot looked good. And then you, realize he won the three-point competition and i like how smooth he was he was patient he got in and out of his moves um everything just looks solid as mech have shown on tape right now and he also had a drive that was gorgeous where it was like a counter and a step through with a nice finish and my favorite part of watching him was realizing he's going to Duke and then realizing that he's going to be playing with Tyrese Proctor all year. Yeah. And I was just like, this is going to be very, very fun. Duke basketball is back. John Shire. Hello. This might be the one. Yes. Like, Oh, that counter. And then the step, I was just like, all right, Cody, like, and Cody that is fine there, but that was just really nice in and out, like tight windows execution. I was like, man, he looks like he's a sophomore in college, not a senior in high school. So I love this game. Yeah, and and the fact that he wasn't just a shooter and was able to kind of score by penetrating and getting into the lane, I thought was really encouraging. And then I even liked some of his playmaking. I had just a solid, you know, baseline drive into a kick out. Um, and then he had another one that was a is out of a drive. If I could figure out how technology works, oh my goodness, killing it. Um, where it's just like this one hand where he drove middle, uh, collapsed the defense right into a um like one-handed skip pass yeah to the weak side right to brawny splash it for three it was awesome 
in a game in which a lot of guys look out of control because they're trying to speed up, he was in control. He just yeah. looked like he was poised and he was like, okay, I could play at this speed or, or he, let me rephrase that. Rewind. He looked like a guy that said, no, you'll play down to my speed. Like yeah. everyone's trying to go hundred miles an hour. We're going to go down to 80. We're going to go the speed limit. And then he would just hit you with hesitations and, and knew exactly where he wanted to go. The ball. I was like, that's a, fun one but then realizing he's gonna play with proctor i was like oh my yeah. gosh this is and, awesome like and i love this mark mitchell on and the mark mitchell end. oh gosh um now well, that duke team is gonna be fun yes um, along with sean stewart coming in mckenzie mbaco apologies on pronunciation if i put because that. it's the mentality of this team now like, yeah proctor is gonna be ready to roll jared looks fantastic that's a fun backcourt and then sean stewart we'll talk about um He's gonna need that nastiness inside. Um, Mackenzie, I'm gonna have to wait and see. I know he's got a lot of hype. I was, you know, yeah, have thoughts, but I, I just didn't see anything. <laughs> it's just like, okay, like, yeah, I'll I'll see you later. That's the pro. That's the I have to admit that to people. When I don't love a guy right now, I'm like, I'll see you in a couple months. That's yep. fine. We'll revisit this conversation. Like, I'm okay. It's fine. Um, yeah, well, well, while we're here, let's just pivot to Sean Stewart. What were yeah, your let's kind just of do thoughts it. with him? Because I think we're going back to the FIBA yeah. 17 stuff. We were a little, little underwhelmed. He was just kind of a spot minute role player. Didn't do much. Didn't play outside of himself. Just did the little things. Um, that was kind of my takeaway again in this game. I, I like how he plays. I think he's a really good athlete. He had a mid-range pull-up that looked really smooth and comfortable. Um, I think there is more to his game, but he doesn't really ever force it which is you know both a good and bad thing depending on the situation so i'm gonna have to go back to that because i thought we were like i really like him he rebounds the crap out of the ball he plays hard but he has nothing offensively and i feel like me and you were mm -hmm. even like if he could just get a shot and when he took the first i even wrote around like the the first turnaround he took i was like that looked like an nba move like it was just so smooth and then I was yeah, like, and just the guy. Just looking at my notes right now, I'm second bullet point under him. This I have athlete first, second bullet point. Shot looks much better than FIBA U17. Yes, so that's what I was getting at because I think I was like, he, he took another one, and anytime a guy takes one and looks great, I'm like, uh oh, that usually doesn't follow with <laughs> looking. And then he took another one. I was like, that looked smooth, and yeah. then I was like, okay, if this is the guy I'm remembering, and I think it is, and I was like, if that becomes something. And I'm not asking for him to hit a three-point shot. I'm just asking him, like, just get out there, and then we can slowly move you. Like, down the road, we could slowly move you out there. But um, he looks like he's just going to be a really fun guy to, to monitor um, moving forward. And he might be – I hate using role player because it's everyone thinks it's a negative, but he might just be a really dang fun yeah. asset to have where you, you continue to develop the shot. But um, – I know he plays hard because he's a bit undersized and it's like, I think we watched that FIBA and we we're like, is he a center that's just stuck in a six, eight body, but he's nasty. He's fun. Um, mm -hmm. I'm excited for that team now. And I hate saying that I'm excited <laughs> for Duke teams, but this one really seems like it's going to be fun. All right. Uh, uh, where, where, where do you want to go? Anywhere you want. I, I'm tired of always making the calls. I want oh, I, Metcalf I, I to have an episode. To Duke. How dare you? How dare you slander my... I'll, I'll get this transitions. one out of the way. Um, Buzelis. Let's get it out of the way. If that's a projected number one pick, we have a lot of stuff to talk about. So yeah. I'm going to be the positive guy. I didn't see much. So I'm going to try to be positive and not just be like, you know, we have a long time to go. He's going to yeah. go. He's going to the right place. Yes. Another guy that's going to the right place. Um, for everyone that doesn't know, he's 6'9", listed around 200 pounds. I would love to see the proof. Looks way skinnier than that. Um, it, it is a tantalizing prospect. The announcers kept saying that. It looks very far from a projected number one pick. That's all I'm going to say. It's one game. This is an event in which if you don't, look comfortable on the court, you really can stand out in a yeah. bad way. And I don't think he ever looked comfortable. So I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt and just say, I'll, I'll go see him in the G league, but that's all I have. I I'm trying to be positive.
Yeah, and it just looked like he was going through the motions out there. Yeah. Um, it he kind of just looked disinterested, and it's just like, oh, this is he. He looked like the one guy out there who was like, this is an all star game, and I'm going to treat it like that. Um, so I wasn't overly enthused with him. Um, he's at Hoop Summit, right? Um, checking. I believe so. I believe because I'm believe really so. excited I'm, to go see him now. I'm, I'm like, whoa, very excited. Um, so I feel like you're like if you try to talk to me that first practice when we're watching him, I might I might not talk to anyone. I might be like I have <laughs> to sure relocate to the opposite side of the gym. <laughs> it, and it's I'm I'm really not trying. I was just like, whoa! It, yeah, it's, it looks like an all star game. Yes, um, he. Is not. Oh, that's a bummer. Wait, no, that's that's wrong. I'm I'm gonna find this. I feel like I saw he is. So keep going. Anyway, regardless, um, it looked like a guy that Ignite literally joined. A, what ignite will be good for him. Yes, and it it looked like a guy that literally joined a high school in the middle of a school year, like mm-hmm. your first day of school. It just looked like he's like, okay, I, I'm you know all over the place. Um, yes or no, he's not. I'm sorry, he's okay. not going. Well, okay, bummer. wow, that's. That's a bummer, but we get um, the Frenchman, who I'm more excited about. Mm, Zachary? Yeah, oh gosh, I'm so pumped. Oh my God, I'm I'm so pumped for him. So, um, Mackenzie also, so I need to watch them too. Um, What else you got? Hit me. Let's uh, go through the rest of the Kentucky guys. Um, Let's do it. Aaron Bradshaw, number four overall recruit, uh, seven foot, two hundred fifteen pound center. Um, Justin Edwards, the number one overall recruit, six seven, one ninety, um, small forward. And then Reed Shepard, uh, ESPN's twenty first overall prospect, six two, one hundred seventy five pound shooting guard. Um, wait a sec. What is Reed on the? Okay, he's twenty first. Um. I'm going to save the best for last. <laughs> um, everyone will understand what I say in a second. Um, <laughs> all of the bigs in this game look like they need to live in the weight room. Not surprised. Um, they're high school seniors getting ready. They're going to put on some weight. Bradshaw looked okay in the first half to me. Hit a switch and then looked awesome to me. Um I don't know if I would have him top five pick awesome right now as we're overreacting in March, uh, you know, a year ahead, but looks like some fun stuff. I f- it, it was funny because I feel like all of the bigs, their first touch of the game, they wanted to take a three point shot, which was just mm-hmm. funny. It was just kind of like, okay. Um, free throw looked fine. I feel like it, it, when he was just on fire mentally and he was a maniac on the board. So I was like, okay, if this is what you're getting at Kentucky, this is a terrifying development. But um, what did you think? You're, you're usually the, the harsh big man critic with me. So what did you think of Bradshaw? Um, he, he was nasty on the offensive glass. Um, like he was out working everybody on, in that kind of area of the game. Um, just, got himself immediately involved, which you always love to see. I thought the jumper looked good. It didn't go in a ton, but it's like, okay, this I, I think this is going to be a guy who shoots it down the road out of pick and pop spot up kind of stuff. Um, he's, he's weak. He needs to get stronger. You know, and that, that's not a huge indictment on him. He's a teenager, all teenagers. Well, most teenagers besides Isaiah Callier are soft or not soft. <laughs> Need, need to get stronger. Uh, but he he just struggled finishing through contact in the post. So that's something he's really going to have to work on um, because I, I don't think just being kind of a lanky pick and pop big is really tenable long term. I, I think you have to have a little bit more to your game and at least be a threat to score inside around the rim. He's not there yet. I think he'll get there. Uh, I really liked his motor and the way he got involved. So he felt raw, not quite there yet. Um, but I, I definitely think there's an awesome and really exciting foundation to kind of build on. Absolutely. Um, what'd you think of Edwards? Um, I'm intrigued. I, re- I really liked him as a player. He seemed 
to just do the right things all the time. Um, he didn't wow me though. Um, like I, I thought this, that this play was his best where he kind of helps off strong side corner, steals the entry pass to the roller, takes it in transition, euros around the guy for the layup. I thought that was really nice. It's like, Oh, okay. That's fun. Um, but he never really kind of took over the game. He never really wowed me with his shot or his playmaking. Everything just felt really sound and really consistent and reliable. Shot looked good to me. Um, I don't know if it's the lefty, you know, the lefty tag. I feel like left-handed guys always look better when they have a good shot. Um, you know, Michael Red, just I love his shot all the time. Guys always look better when they left it. Even baseball, left-handed swings always look great. Um, the shot looked good. He had one defensive possession, which was like, oh my gosh, if this is there, we have some fun. Um, he forced the three-second, which you never see in an all-star game. But just the footwork, the length, it was nastiness. I think this is it right here. Yes. And I was just like, okay, like that's something. Um, so I was very excited about that. And I was like, okay, if you're going to go to Kentucky, you have floor spacing potential. There just was some smoothness where I was like, okay, I need more. I need more. Like, there it is. I need some more, which, you know, he gets the tag as the number one recruit in the country. Mm -hmm. I just, I just wanted to see some more. And, um, that's going to happen with anyone, but that's the thing. Like if he was ranked fifth, that'd be like awesome, but yeah, just it's unfair, obviously. Yes. But when you have that number one next to your name, you want it to pop a little more. Yes. Um, and you know, I I don't hate it because I just thought it, his all around game was really good. It just wasn't like, oh yeah, this is a number one dude. Who knows? No, I'm right there with you. Um, that's why I hate high school rankings because <laughs> yes. I feel like they're just so wild. Like, I don't know. Um. All right, where you want to go? And you you're just gonna skip over our boy like that, Ben Shepard. No, I was just testing. Not... I love Reed. Reed Shepard. Excuse guy. me. Sorry. I'm in. I'm in on Reed, and this is not me saying I'm like, oh, Reed's a top ten pick. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just in on Reed Shepard, the player. Like, I absolutely love. He's. I joked with Metcalf before we hit record. I was like. He might play three years at Kentucky. I don't care. Like, I just like how he plays the game and he looks smooth. He also looked a little stocky. He looked like he's going to be a guy that's just a, a pest at Kentucky. His background's amazing with his, his mom played at Kentucky, was a maniac basketball player. Dad played at Kentucky, was a maniac. Um, he was also hilarious during the sideline interviews. He just was like, Oh, mom was a better basketball player. I'm going to go with that. I just started laughing. Like he just seems like, and he looks like he's a tough SOB. So I, and I'm, you know, I'm not just rooting for the little white guard and don't get it twisted. He played the game the right way. He came in, made a couple drives, had some nice dump offs, hit a couple shots. I, I I think he's going to be a fun college player. And, um, he just looks like he's a gamer. I love that dump off. I was like, woo. Like, I was like, okay, kid could play. And I, um, just a fun one. It was, yeah. it was, you know what it was? It was, I thought he was going to come in and be like overwhelmed. And he was not. He was ready to roll. He's like, let's, let's go check ball. And I was like, that is a guy you want on your team. And you never know. Like, what if he goes to college and is hitting 43% from three and plays good guard play? Then all of a sudden you're like, hey, you're TJ McConnell. No, <laughs> No, but I like I when he checked in, I was like, "Oh God, who's this kid?" Here we go. And then he's making plays on defense. He's moving the ball. He's hitting shots. It's like, oh, okay, no, he, he can play. Um, and it was a white thing. I'll say it. Yeah, yeah it was a white thing. It, 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 no, I'm saying like he checked in, guy. and I was like, "Oh, small white guy going <laughs> against." I just watched Ron Holland and Collier like go up the court and just destroy people, and now we got this little white guy coming in and. He was giving it out. He looked fantastic. Another guy that did not look, you know, like he was out of control. So I just, I liked how he played. And I'm not talking about just like NBA drafts. We're going to have a long discussion when it comes to that. But um, he's going to have to do some stuff in Kentucky <laughs> to get in that conversation. But um, just, just fun, fun talent. It yeah. would not shock me if he 
has a long career at Kentucky or if, you know, he sets the, the nets on fire over there. I don't know. All right. Um, let's pivot to, I, I think, kind of one of the last big names here. Uh, Cody Williams, number six on ESPN, going to Colorado. Uh, 6'8", 175 pounds, small forward. Brother of Jalen Williams of the OKC Thunder, friend of the program. Friend of the program. Um, what were your thoughts? Um, I get the I get the excitement. Mm-hmm. Um, this is the guy that's like the flashes. I think are gonna. I even think I wrote down like flashes are gonna have evaluators drunk, just because like it, some of the flashes. I was like, oh my gosh. Um, okay, I get it. Like just lengthy. He looks like he's still figuring out his body. Um, I even wrote raw and then raw yeah. next to it with capital letters. Just he had some really impressive drives, and then it was, you know, million dollar play, 10 cent finish. Like it was just like, okay, like the flashes are gonna have people really excited. And I even wrote one of those quote, when he puts it together. Like there was some really intriguing stuff. Mm-hmm. I just think he's got to get reps, get, get playing time, keep working. You're on the right path. Cause everything comes together. It's going to be really, really fun. But in that game, it was either trying to do too much or just things were moving too fast or just, I don't know. I, he's puzzling because I really, really see the mm-hmm. long-term vision. What about you? Yeah, I, I thought he did an awesome job of like turning the corner and getting downhill on his drives. Um, I thought his hit-ahead passes and transition were really impressive. Um, I, I just liked his overall feel for the game. Yeah. You can tell that he's a really smart player. He gets how the game works and flows and how to kind of insert himself into that. Uh, the defense was good, mostly. Um, handful of plays where he you know, was really good for 85% of it and then just kind of failed to complete it. Uh, jumper, another, again, I hate I hate that we have to go there, but it needs work. So, yeah, raw, really high feel, really high potential. I'm really intrigued and excited and definitely get why he's at number six. Yeah, I, I mean, the first couple drives of the game, I was like, okay, was six favorable and then i kept watching and i was like okay i'm in like i was excited and then mm-hmm. i just you know another guy i'm really pumped to watch at hoop summit um th- you you worded it the perfect way i feel like there was a lot of possessions in which 85 percent of it was great and then the last 15 percent, i was like oh like oh, okay come on just figure he had some drives where he looked like he got around the corner and then he's like what do i do like, yeah, like, and he and, got and to the line a bunch. Yeah, no, no, and, and I'm 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 not trying to be negative. I'm that, no, I, no, I mean no. that in the best way. It's like everything is is there. He just has to unlock a couple more areas of the game um, because with that frame, that length, that fluidity, like yeah, he could be a problem. And it's just going to take some time. Like everyone's going to compare him now to his brother Jalen. Jalen. Played multiple years of college before he mm-hmm. started cooking. Like everyone's got to realize, it just takes time. So I like that he's going to Colorado. He's going to play at a great conference. Um, I think one of their biggest recruits they've had in a really long time. Yeah. So that's awesome. I, I, it's it's going to be really cool. And you know, all of a sudden, quickly, we're talking about UCLA could have a team next year. USC, Colorado, Arizona is always going to be solid. Like that's Pac-12 is going to be fun again. Well, it's been a while since they have been, so that, that, that's good mm-hmm. to hear. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right, um, let, let's just go with a couple quick hitters. Yeah. Um, I thought Jacoby Walter going to Baylor, ESPN's 14th overall recruit. Uh, really intriguing, really good really athlete. Really intriguing, yes. Um, again, raw, kind of sloppy with the ball at times, but I get, I definitely get the excitement, and two, maybe, you know, two-ish years down the road uh, could be definitely a guy. Um, and I think uh, Jermaine O'Neal said that he's been working with him as well. Um, and then on Andre Stryakovich, son of Peja, um, scored a bit off the bounce. Shot looks good. I thought he held his own on defense. Um, we didn't see a ton of him, but I, I, I was really intrigued with what we did see. Yeah, I, I Walters was a guy that the more I watched – 
the the more the game went on and the more he was on the floor, the more I was like, okay, all right. Yeah. I kind of like it. I like it, you know, and then he had a good sequence actually against Cody Williams where um, Cody held his own, but he just, it was just a nice play by Jacoby. And I was like, all right, like I, I like it. Um, Jacoby Walter, sorry. Um, he looked like he had, had a nice little shot that's developing too. I like that he's going to Baylor. It's going to be not So I was like, okay, I'm intrigued. Um, I'll just run through two. Stojakovic, I like. I think another guy too, I'm not going to be putting realistic or unrealistic. Like, okay, he's got, he's going to be a one and done. Mm-hmm. I would not be shocked me if he's just one of these guys that I liked his game a lot. The best thing ever was he started the game. His first shot was way off. Yes. looked like he was just <laughs> pumped up. And then the next shot he got just, just pure straight confidence, nothing, but net. I was just like, all right, perfect. Like, dad taught you well so um i liked him i'll go through my quick hitters too um i still love jeremy fears absolutely foaming at the mouth to watch him at michigan state i think i'm dreading it i know i'm sorry but i really liked him he a lot of the guards look good in this game and fears had a couple like hesitations that I was like, whoa, that one really pops. Just he's got to put it together. He had one that was great, but then it was like, didn't finish. And I was like, okay. And then he had a nice steal. I think maybe another one too. And they called it a foul. And I was like, that's terrible. So I was like, oh gosh, he's going to be fun with Izzo. Um, I liked Omaha Blue. I I really did. I'm, I'm intrigued. I'm excited. I I just think that's going to be a fun one. He's going to Iowa, Iowa State. So, um, Plus, it's got one of the best names I've ever heard for a, a wink in college basketball. So, I don't know. That's that's all I got. Unless you got anybody else, um, uh, just just last two, uh, two kind of shifty, fun scoring point guards, uh, Stephen Castle uh, yes. going to UConn and Aiden Holloway going to Auburn. Um, I don't. Know. They they were just fun, and that that's my big picture takeaway from them. Oh, Marco Jackson going to Kansas too. Um, he had he's on my list of i wrote come back around like he had a couple flashes mm-hmm. one play he had a nice drive got blocked i think by ron holland and <laughs> i was just like okay and then he he had a good shot once had another drive i was like there's some flashes there i wrote down flashes need to be unlocked flashes like and i, I wrote down come back around um xavier booker another big that attempted a three his first shot um I didn't talk about your boy Aiden Holloway, who I just found out Metcalf while we're on here, he's actually on the world team because he's from Canada. Oh, so we're gonna have a real fun very week. Fun. Yes. So um I don't know his NBA projection, but he's gonna be fun. Yeah. He's gonna be fun in SEC guard. He's going to Auburn. So that's that's all I got. It was fun. I, I really I will vent one real quick thing. I hate that we always say the class is going to be bad because I, I joke with everyone. I say everyone starts with bad. They turn around and say it's strong like five months later or someone starts with strong, goes to bad, and then it gets deep. We always do this. It happens all the time. So let's just give these guys some some breaks. And I think this class has some fun, unique talent that I'm excited to watch next year. Um, I don't know if there's superstars in here, but um, – I don't know. The last thing I will say, sorry, I, I lied. I meant to say this earlier. I got pissed because I saw Raphael Barlow, shout out Raphael, um, said this on Twitter, and I was literally waiting to say this on the pod. But I was watching that whole game, and I just kept saying, how would Gigi Jackson look on this floor right now? Really fucking good. <laughs> so I and And it was right after or no and it was right after i was doing his finals breakdown on our youtube channel and um i fo- I started falling again for gg i just saw some of the offensive stuff and i was like oh gosh okay okay all right okay i just kept seeing it he had like a sequence where i was like that literally looked like carmelo off the dribble like the little hezzy like pull up mm-hmm. from the corner i was like that's a mellow move so i just kept reminding myself last night i was like he's supposed to be on this in this game He's supposed to be playing with these guys. How would he look right now? And I was like, he'd probably be in the conversation for number one now if yeah. he was playing this game. So that also got me realizing, yeah, instead he just played one year of SEC basketball 
and then I just entered Alice in Wonderland rabbit hole of like thoughts. So like, I mean, does that do anything to you when you, if you like think about that and sit down and you're like, am I being too harsh on the kid? You know what I'm trying to say? Like I, that's yeah. where I start really getting into thoughts of like, and, and annoyingly, then I start texting around the league. Cause I'm like, <laughs> okay, let's talk about Gigi. Like, I'm just like, what do you think? Because I'm like, maybe I've been too harsh. I still have him as a top 20, top 18 guy, but I'm like, maybe I'm being too harsh. Maybe I'm not realizing how impressive what he just did was. Um, I don't know. Yeah, no, I, I I think that kind of circles back to two of the articles that both of us wrote recently with you with overthinking it and yes, me kind of going through the importance of context and yes it matters and it's a big deal and it can have a huge impact on a kid's season. Um, and when you look at that South Carolina team, it's like, okay, this wasn't a very good team. Uh, he was a year younger than everyone else in his class. He reclassified up. Um, you know, he wasn't allowed to just kind of do whatever he wanted. There were expectations there and that's a huge jump as a 17 year old into sec competition. So, it it does make me rethink it because I, I I do think I was a little harsher with kind of grading him throughout his year. I need to go back and re- review some of it and probably bump him back up closer to, you know, 10-ish range and get him back into more lottery conversation because the ball skills that he had and showed and the, the shooting touch and ability, if he was – showing that in this McDonald's all American game, we would be falling head over heels for him as the number one overall pick. Um, It wouldn't, it wouldn't be close. No. And I'm, I don't know if that's knocking the class or if it's just praising Gigi or both. It just, I don't know. It is what it is. I mean, there's, it it doesn't have to be necessarily that we're tearing these kids down. um, Cause I, we just got through an hour of, talking about how impressive a lot of yeah. what they did was. But I think it's more so just Gigi's really fucking good and he's young. And if you can kind of get that foundation of a player and if he, you know, all the intel is good and you think he's coachable and you can kind of mold him into a superstar, he might be one of the biggest steals from this draft. There's, I I watched everything. I was a little shocked because now we're just open micing it about the draft. Fine, we'll, we'll end it this way. Um, there was better defensive stuff than I was expecting. Um, and as everyone I've said all the time, I do those finals breakdowns because I want to see everyone's highs and I want to be able to measure them from the highs. And then I go back and I watch, you know, all of it. No, I'm just a psychopath. I'll, I'll basically go through all their highs throughout the year. And then I'll be like, okay, now to start just pure game film and Gigi's highs on defense were more impressive than I was expecting. Um, taking in the whole slate. Now it doesn't mean I can't go back and watch full game tape and be like, there's way more lapses than there was, but there was also some really impressive reads away from the ball, shot blocking. There was just some good stuff that I was like, okay, like you're younger. Um, maybe I need to be giving this guy some, some kids, some credit, you know, maybe this is going to check you out. Like, Cause I've, I've said the whole year, like me and you've said it He's top 10 talent offensively. Mm-hmm. There's no doubt. Like he has that talent, but um, just going to be interesting. There's a lot of guys going into this pre-draft process that I think have, the ability to swing their, you know, stock in a big way, either way. But I think a lot of them have a chance to really get cooking up forwards because we see it every year. Yeah. So l- let's just finish it off with yeah. America's favorite game. Um, that's only yes. here. this or that. I need so. to get some theme music. We're working on it. I'm, I'm <laughs> working on it. All right. So Gigi or Max Lewis. This is the the conversation I'm I'm getting at because I have them. I'll just pull it up right now. I just did both of their breakdowns. I did both of their finals, and both of them I left and I went. Why did I move them down? Some like I was like Max Lewis did some stuff this year that is unheard of. 
just, I mean, just like unbelievably impressive for how late bloomer he is. I'm, I'm probably going to move them both back up. I would lean GG right now, just from what I watched. I just, I had him on my old big board at 18 and 19. Okay. Back to back. And I had GG ahead and I would probably, I'm going to try to move both of them back up, but I would stay GG. Okay. Uh, GG or Colby Jones. Colby. GG or Hawkins. Hawkins. See, and everyone's going to go crazy right now, but I think, Hawkins is going to get close to the top 10 than people think. Just my vibe from some of the breadcrumbs I've been hearing. Um, Colby's my hot take, but that's just close to my heart. And how dare you? <laughs> so, no, but I think Gigi will end up going early. I've also heard Colby's got some fans. People are asking. Uh, Gigi or Hochefino? I'm literally about to do Hutch Fino's finals and I've cooled on him and I feel like I'm going to watch and fall in love. But right now I'll say GG. GG. That one hurt. That one hurt. GG or Grady Dick. I'm going to say GG there too. GG or Kobe Bufkin. Oh, you dick. (laughs) If, if that, if my if I was on the clock and that came down, it would be completely of like, I wouldn't draft for need, but I would have to just that would be Intel, that would be roster. I got Kobe above him. What about you? Let's throw. Give me the same answers for you. Same. Um, I had so I just moved GG up to fourteen. Oh um, gosh. Yeah. I'm. So I, I, I have, I have I Kobe put above him. In, him. I would put the him only at, one I have above him. I would put him at 16 or 15 right now. Um, And that would mean, well, screw it. I'll just admit it. Right now I have Hawkins, Buffkin, Colby. Four, 13, 14, 15. I'm probably going to move Gigi up and knock one of those names down. It's going to hurt, and I already know who it's going to be. It's going to hurt a lot. It's going to hurt a lot. Um, and probably won't sleep well, but yeah. So I'll probably have GG knocking back on the lottery door. This is what I do. I mean, this is what we do. Mm-hmm. Now we have time to watch all the film. So I'm, you know, I'm about to move GG up four or five spots. Like that's how quick it happens when you get to take in the whole sample compared to everybody else. So we'll see. I don't know. All right, Rucker, this was a blast. Um, everyone, you can follow him on Twitter at Tyler underscore Rucker. Go do so. Um, and once again, I'm Tyler Metcalf. You can follow me on Twitter at TMetcalf11. Uh, you can find all of our written work at noceilingsnba.com. It's 100% free. Just click that subscribe button while you're there to make sure that you never miss anything that we publish. You can follow us across all socials at No Ceilings NBA and on YouTube at No Ceilings TV. If you enjoyed this episode, please make sure to subscribe, leave a review, and five-star rating. Until next time, see ya.